Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we will continue looking at chapter six, ICT applications from the ICT IGCC course. This is now part three. So please check out the previous videos and uh, try to catch up to this point. So we're now looking at 6.6, .6, banking applications. Let me zoom in. So hopefully you can see the content a little bit more clearer. Okay. Right, so online banking. So what is online banking? So basically it's a method to allow customers to access their bank account details on an online platform. So it could be either on a website or using a banking application. So to access your banking details, the website or the application will use authentication techniques. So maybe you need to type in a code, maybe we've got two-factor authentication, a code will be sent to your phone, and then you need to enter that number in um, to your website in order to log in okay so why do we use online banking systems why do customers use it let's focus on the customers so a customer so for example me uh, i work abroad uh, my home country is the uk and if i want to manage my uk accounts obviously i'm not in the country so i need to use the online method so either uh, a website or through the online banking application on my phone so I can use online banking to check my balance. Okay, if I want to print statements out, I can um, print statements on a monthly basis. I can manage direct debits. So these are maybe uh, regular bills which are coming, uh, payments which are coming out of my account. So maybe for uh, Google uh, to, or my Netflix and so on. Maybe I want to transfer money internally from one account to another account of mine or externally to other accounts using EFT, so electronic fund transfer. Or maybe I want to apply for a loan or a credit card. Okay, so the advantages is we don't need to travel to the bank. Um, so let's actually look at the, this table here. So the advantage to the customer is uh, we can access online banking um, on these two platforms, uh, application or the website 24 seven whilst on the move saves time um, and costs so no traveling or money spent on traveling or parking statements can be downloaded from a given time period and it's very secure as we have several layers of authentication so even if someone guesses your password or username um, if you don't have your phone then maybe you can't log in without two-factor authentication however disadvantage internet connection is required it's less personable for those people who prefer direct communication with a bank representative. And your account could be hacked or passwords could be stolen from key login software like spyware. Okay. Um, I just want to, just before actually, let me just zoom out a little bit, uh, talk about also um, what are the advantages and disadvantages, advantages to the bank? of having um, an online platform. So obviously if the banks um, have this application or have uh, this website, then they don't need to have as many branches open. So what that means is they're not having to pay rent on these buildings. They don't need to employ people to work at these buildings. They're not paying on utilities. So there's lots of benefits. Um, so for example, in the UK, the bank I bank with, there's actually no banks now. Uh, you have to go online. So that is a source of frustration sometimes when you want to get something sorted and you can't deal with someone face to face, but you can call call centers, I suppose, and speak to someone um, if there is an issue. Right, let's have a look at um, computers in medicine, 6.7. So information systems um, in medicine. So when I was younger, I remember going to a doctor and the doctor would come out with um, a folder with all of your information in. Every time you make an appointment, this folder was updated and with another, with another piece of paper. Sorry, my, just my phone was going off there. So why would we use this technology? Um, I know recently um, I went to get my blood test done in one department of a hospital. Then I went to another section of the hospital and automatically they had the results available on their system. So keeping patient records in a database um, so the correct diagnosis can be given according to patient's medical history. So maybe I've had some previous um, hospital appointments and the doctors can make the best diagnosis based on my previous history and based on my most recent diagnosis. Uh, we can use technology, technology to monitor 
patients' vital signs uh, using measure and control systems. So let's say we're operating, doctors are operating on the patient. Uh, we can use the measure and control to monitor the patient's condition. We don't need to be watching them 24-7. And we can also use the um, expert systems, which will come to, to diagnose uh, an illness. So we can use lots of technologies within hospitals, um, doctors' surgeries, to provide a more accurate uh, diagnosis of a patient's illness. Um, so computers can take more accurate and frequent readings as well. So if you're connected to the vital signs, it can take frequent readings more often. Computers can respond quicker to any changes in patients' conditions. Staff are available now to complete other tasks and data can be stored in a central place, which can be accessed from any point in the hospital. And we are saving physical storage space because we're not having folders of folders of papers. Um, yeah. However, the disadvantage is the equipment initially to purchase would be quite expensive. Training would be required. Regular maintenance of the system would be required. And system could stop responding. Um, we can also use 3D printers in hospital environments uh, for surgical and diagnostic aids. Um, for prosthetic, um, if we're saying it right, uh, knees or legs, tissue engineering, artificial blood vessels, uh, the design of medical tools and equipment. So the use of 3D printers is relatively cheap. Printing can be uh, faster compared to manufacturing the parts. So making a part, it may be quicker just to print that part off. Uh, the technology is still in the early stages of development and there's limited selection of materials available. But obviously with 3D printers, uh, it's moving quite rapidly in terms of what it can produce, compare it to last year or the year before. Okay. So guys, now we're going to be looking at expert systems. Um, expert systems can be used in many fields. And before we look at this slide, what I would like to do is um, basically talk about how an expert system is developed. And just to give you some context uh, before we look into expert systems. Now, if I take my car to the garage, the mechanic at the garage is not going to be an expert on all car engines from different brands from different years. So if there's a problem with my uh, electronics, something's flashing up my dashboard, what will typically happen is um, the mechanic will plug in the computer into the car and the computer will run the diagnostics to check to see what the problem is. And finally, we'll get the, um, the problem and a solution. So the reason the mechanic will use the computer, which has been developed by the experts, is because he is not, as I mentioned, the expert on all engines. Okay. So even if you go and see a doctor, a doctor may be a specialist in a certain field, in all fields, um, an expert system may be used to give a better diagnosis on your illness. So how do we create an expert system? So first of all, we gather data and let's link it back to the medical expert system. We gather data from experts, so maybe doctors in that field, to create the knowledge base. The rules base is also designed, and this is created based on the information on a knowledge base. So imagine you're playing chess, for example, against the computer. The computer can't move their pieces in any direction. It has to follow a set of rules. And the same principle applies here. We can't give information back without applying a set of rules uh, to a particular context. Then a user interface is designed and created, which will provide the user the ability to interact with the system. And an inference engine is then designed to create as a link between a user and the interface and the knowledge base. So this will be the link, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then obviously the system will have to be tested with some possible inputs to see if we are getting the right outputs. So I'll come back to this part here. So let's go to this part here. So an expert system are used to provide expert opinions without the need for the expert. By using a system, um, let me just, so expert opinions without the need for the expert by using a system, allowing a user to query the knowledge base to find solutions to their problems. Right, so here's a little diagram here. I've got, uh, I'm not feeling too great. Um, that's, I need to consult with an expert. I can't see a doctor. 
So I'm going to be using an expert system. I get headaches quite frequently, my temperature's going up. So what will happen is the user, which is me in this case, will interact with the user interface. Uh, so the user interface will allow the user to interact by entering in some data, uh, maybe choosing some values from a drop-down menu. So in this case, I will enter my symptoms, okay? And what will happen is the influence engine will then check, or oh, the influence engine will act as a search engine and it will query the knowledge base to match the query of the user. So this is where the knowledge is based on the experts, okay? And the influence engine will check the knowledge base and will check for the information and additional questions could be asked to the user to provide a more uh, specific diagnosis. Okay, so remember the knowledge base is information that's developed by experts, okay? So I've typed in, uh, again, frequent headaches, temperature, the influence engine is acting as a search engine, checks the knowledge base. The knowledge base is going to check the rules to see what feedback can we give to this person based on their input. Okay, so then we come back here, back to the user. Okay, based on what you've inputted, uh, we're gonna ask you a few more questions to be a little bit more specific. Uh, maybe about the temperature, how high is your temperature um, and how long are you getting, having this temperature for? The user will input further information. Uh, the inference engine will check the knowledge base and then eventually we'll get to a point where uh, the expert system can give um, an expert diagnosis based on the inputs made by the user, okay? We also have the explanation system. So the explanation system explains how the expert system arrived at a conclusion or a recommendation. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, guys, uh, the car diagnostics expert system. So the car engine will be connected to the diagnostic expert system. The expert system will automatically test certain functions and provide feedback uh, for repair. Here's another exam question here, guys. A mining company has asked a knowledge engineer to devise an expert system to help them with the, uh, their prospecting for valuable minerals. Describe how this expert system would be created. Now, I have no idea about minerals and uh, mining, but obviously you just need to think about the keywords. Okay, so experts who will then develop the knowledge base. The rules base would then have to be developed in order to give specific feedback. Um, a user interface would have to be developed to allow the user to interact with the system. And the inference engine would then act as a search engine, checking the knowledge base. So first of all, how do we develop the um, expert system? Data was collected from the experts to develop the knowledge base. The rules base is then created based on information from the knowledge base. The user interface screen is designed, created, which will provide the user with the ability to interact with the system. The influence engine is designed, created as a search engine between a user interface and a knowledge base, and the system is then tested. Okay, I hope that makes sense, guys. Uh, let's look at the next question here. Describe how an expert system is used to diagnose um, an illness. So the user interacts with the interface. The expert system asks questions about the illness. The user may reply with either a yes or no response. The answers lead to other questions. The inference engine searches the knowledge base using the rules base. Possibilities of a diagnosis um, and treatments are then displayed. And some more questions. A person contacts an online medical website that uses an expert system to allow users to self-diagnose an illness. Write down the components within the expert system that matches the definition given. So the component contains, uh, this component contains uh, a database of facts, so developed by the experts, which is knowledge base. This component carries out the reasoning of the expert system. And uh, this is going to be the influence engine, which is looking at the content in the knowledge base. This component will allow the person to interact with the system. And this is the user interface. Okay, guys, this part of the video uh, chapter, I'll have a look at in the next video. So we've come to this end. Let me say that again. We've come to the end of this part of this video. Join me in the next video and we'll look at 6.9 computers in the retail industry. Uh, please drop your comments below, like and share. Uh, please subscribe to the channel as well, show your support, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
Bye-bye.